Okay, let me show you the Fender S1 switching pot. Okay, there's four different versions of this pot. Let's start with the basics. There's a smooth shaft version and a, and a spline shaft. The smooth shaft is for the telly knobs. There's a set screw knob and the button pushes in on the top. That goes on the smooth shaft and the spline shaft goes for the goes with the strat. So what you end up with is all these pieces end up being sold separately. There's a 250k version of these pots and there's a 500k version of these pots. It actually says on the side, I don't think it'll pick up on this camera, but um, it, there's a, it says right here on the side whether it's 500k or whether it is 250k. You can kind of see that there. So they sell these little bags with Mr. Gearhead on here. I don't know what the story is with Mr. Gearhead, but you buy these parts. Uh, every piece is individually sold, um, meaning the pot is one item, the knob without the cap is another item, and then you have to buy a cap separately. So for the strat, the cap looks like this. There's actually a center post and another little tab that kind of keep that essentially keeps it retained in there. On the telly version, what you end up with is there's another part, which if you buy these off of eBay like I did, nobody seems to sell that little part. There's a little nylon coupler, they call it. So you get a knob and a little set screw. It goes in that knob. And then there's a separate item that is just the cap. Now what's missing from this is a nylon coupler, which is yet another part number that no one on eBay has, and I can only find one seller on the internet at all that had this thing. But uh, So for the telly, you get this combination of things, but what you'll notice is there's nothing to retain that button. And so even when it's installed on the pot, it works just fine, but if you turn it over, it falls right out because there's nothing to hold it in there. Versus the strat knob, which even though there's nothing retaining it, it's just fine. It stays in there just fine. This second little post provides enough support that it keeps it from falling out and it doesn't it doesn't do anything, it's just fine. Now on these I did have to, on one of them, I don't know if this is the one, there was a little bit of molding, you know, flash on the edge of the knob and so it was real stiff and it would push down but it wouldn't come back up again uh, and so I had to take uh, some sandpaper or maybe it was just an X-Acto knife and kind of clean up that edge a little bit so you might have to do that. You really can't do that with these, they're a chrome finish knob, There's a, they're a smooth finish knob, you start sanding on that you're going to scuff it all up but I'm not finding that that's really an issue with this particular knob. So essentially these S1 switching pots are a standard looking CTS pot if you look at the pot itself. If you compare it to let's say this is a Fender TBX pot they are identical in the way they're constructed and the size of that wafer. So that means you could do the same thing you can do with all these. You can take a small screwdriver and you can pry these back these little tongs here back take this nut off of there and you can actually disassemble this and you can actually take this out and replace the carbon strip this this part that contains the carbon strip that is the pot so if you've got uh, a 250k and you want to turn it into a 500k you can actually if you had a CTS pot that was a 500k you could actually swap that out and not have to go searching for the 500k version of this. So what this thing does is let's take the spline version of it. There is it's hard to see inside here but there's a little you can push that down there's a little plunger down inside there that is an actuator for this switch. If I get it just right here you'll be able to see that you can see down in, if you look down in here, you can see, well, 
I've got the cap right here, why don't I just use that? If I use their cap, you can see that, that it's a push-push switch, pushes down, pops back up, and that's what that switch is doing. Is that, and there, there's that, this, this switch here is... Oh, okay. That's why it... Okay, now I've answered a question. This cap has a, is a hollow tube and it just happens to be the right size if you could see that clearly in there there's actually that plunger is actually a spline has a spline shaft on it so when this goes in it actually grabs a hold of that and that's how you get the retention on that particular knob now on this other one on the tele knob it's a solid and it's got the little splines on it but it's solid they didn't make that hollow for some reason so what you end up needing to do is have a little um, a little nylon coupling tube that you push down in there and will they'll it'll lock those two together but in such a way that you can actually pull it back apart again so if you want to take the knob off so they sell that as a separate item but interestingly enough it just happens to be the exact same size as the ubiquitous BIC pen so if you have a pen like this it actually has a lot of the ink already out of it. This actually works really well because I don't have to mess with it. But even a new one, you buy a 10 pack of these things at Walmart or someplace for um, 75 cents, and you could, you don't need much of it, so you could actually cut off the end even on a new one. But this just happens to be just the right size tubing to make that make that fit. So what I'm going to do here in a little bit is is cut a length of that. For the uh, for this telly knob, so that I can get that to stay in there. So then the question becomes, how long should that tubing be? You'll notice that this cap, when it's in there, is it actually recesses a little bit when it's all the way up. So that would tell me I want this coupling to be a little bit longer than than it needs to be, so that it'll leave a little bit of a, it'll have a little bit of a it'll push that button up a little bit. So basically there's just a short section of splining on that shaft. You've got a kind of an equivalent thing down inside there so I'm gonna basically take this length and double it up and I'll just cut it with a razor blade and see how that works. Okay so I have selected my length and I'm just cutting through it with a box cutter type knife and I've got a little section here so I've ended up with a little section of this tubing that is eh, 20 64th so that's 5 16 about 5 16 of an inch long we'll see how that works out so I'm going to drop that down in the hole Actually, you know what? Let's just do it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and take this tubing and I'm going to push it on to... <clears throat> it's a little tight, but that's actually good. I've pushed that on to there like that. And let's see if, that's, if that ends up being too long or if that will actually work out for me. I actually pushed all the way in, so it still has that kind of a recess to it. But that is now solidly attached there. It's not going anywhere. And if I want to, I can still I'll loosen the uh, set screw and I should be able to pull the whole thing still apart. Yep. And then we've got that. It stays attached to there. So that's how that's going to work. So let's take a look at how these pins how these pin out on the bottom so that you actually can solder to them. With the strat knob on it, there's down and there's up and flush. So with it flush, if we flip it over so the terminals from the pot are facing down, you can see we've got, these are the actual pins of the switches here. There's four double throw switches um, as part of this assembly. And what Fender has done here, instead of having to try to tack on to these little tiny pins, these rings around the outside that look like they're just rivets that are holding this assembly together 
those are actually the terminals that you're going to solder to. So, um, in this situation, with the with the button up and flush, what you'll find here is this this top switch correlates with these three top pins. This bottom switch correlates with these three bottom terminals. Then, however you want to think of this, I tend to think that this switch here rotates up and clockwise so that these three pins are these three and this one here rotates down and clockwise so that these three pins are these three here. So how this is going to work out is I've got this, I've got my meter set here for continuity so it'll, it'll make a tone. So if I go here with it with the button up the center pin is got continuity to the pin on the right nothing there so it's that one same thing here the one on the right now because this guy has rotated up and clockwise it's going to be essentially the one that's down although it's still to the right if you think of it that way this one this pin this switch here is going to rotate down and clockwise so it's going to end up being these two so it's always the down ones on these one if you're looking at it from this orientation then the side ones down is the uh, down is up and up is down. Uh, if you want to rotate it sideways, then it's still they're still to the right. So they kind of end up going that being with the button up. It's the center is tied to the one to the right. And if we rotate it here, then it's still to the right. Now, if I take this and push the button in, so that that's depressed and we still have our pot terminals down then we're going to be center left center and left and then these guys have rotated up and clockwise so it's going to be that's essentially center and left or if you want to think of it as up this guy is going to rotate down and clockwise so our center and left will be here so that's how those are going to look Okay, here's kind of an interesting alternative. I've cut this section of tubing to about 13 30 seconds, which is just a little over 0.4 inches, a little bit more than 10 millimeters. So it's a little too long. So what you end up with is when the switch is in, it's flush. It's actually a little bit taller than flush, but when you pop it up, it actually pops up instead of coming back flush. So if you had preferred this kind of thing, where it was up and then it was flush, you'd have to wire your switching contacts the reverse because your uh, two positions would be the opposite of what kind of you were thinking originally but um, that's another alternative with this knob because it's got this uh, piece of tubing you can actually re extend the length of the tubing a little bit and get a, a knob that goes up and then flush and here's another thing that's probably worth mentioning this time when I pulled the knob off with the cap involved the tube stayed down inside the shaft. The tube didn't come back with the cap. It actually stayed down inside there. So now it's kind of like, oh, well now what do we do? Okay, so I've been unsuccessful at trying to get that little tube out of down there. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do this disassembly. Pry up the prongs with a small screwdriver. And we'll work our way around here. Of course some of them are a little easier than others. This guy here doesn't want to play along. Hang on just a second. Okay, there we go. I've encouraged that one to play along. So I'm just going to kind of pry them up straight. And you don't have to take the nut out, I just realized. that. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, that nut down there is actually retained. You would have to flatten out those two pieces of metal to unscrew that. So don't even bother with that. You don't need to. You just pry those back carefully. Don't overdo it because you don't want to break them. And then that whole assembly will pop out of there just like any normal CTS pot. Be careful that if you turn it upside down at this point, the wiper will fall out. But you can see there's the uh, there's the resistive element of the pot. 
If you were going to make this a no load pot, you could open this up the same way and some clear nail polish on one end and we can work through that in another video. But that gets me to the point, hopefully, where I can pull this guy out and uh, release that. Hang on. Okay, this is taking a little more work than I thought because that the tube inside there is actually keeping that from coming out. So there we go. So now I've gotten that out. There's the, the actuator for the switch with its little spline shaft. There's grease down on the bottom of that for the, uh, the pot, so try not to get your fingers in that. It's also greased on the bottom of this, so you don't want to set this down on something. And there's my little there's my tube. Okay, so there's my tube that was a little too long. I'm going to shorten that up now. One thing I do want to show you, as long as we're here, there are two small Phillips screws in here that are actually going into these standoffs holding that switch assembly so if you needed to remove that entire thing for some reason um, you have to get to take this uh, disassemble the pot and then you can get those two screws out of there so when you start to reassemble this there's a little indent that's been pressed into the casing here that creates a little a stop inside so that uh, there's a and there's a part of this assembly that will hit that as it rotates, that's what actually creates the stop when you, as you turn it. That indentation is also the side that the resistive element goes in. When this goes in, goes this uh, the element down. These terminals the, that you solder to for the pot itself, they go on this side rather than this other side. So that's how you can figure out which way to put reassemble this if you weren't paying attention when you took it apart. I obviously have the benefit of having assembled ones here to look at. So once the resistive element is in place, this piece with the that the actually gives you your mounting threads, there's nothing uh, unique about that. It could go on actually either way, but that goes back in on top and then you just fold these pins back down. You could probably do this by hand or you could do it with a uh, needle nose pliers. I'll use my screwdriver to get it started. Just kind of flatten those guys back down. So if you had wanted to change this out to a different value, it would be the same process. Alright, I haven't put my tabs all the way back down just in case I have to do this again. Okay, so now I've got my piece of tubing that I've trimmed down just a little bit and it's just under three-eighths of an inch long and you have to kind of push it down in there kind of with some force to get it all the way seated in there and now it's looking pretty good. It's pretty flush there when it's uh, One's up and there's down and there's up. So I would say that's a pretty good that's a pretty good length right there. So uh, just a shade under three eighths of an inch long. On the calipers, it's uh, about thirty six thousandths, which is just a little bit over nine millimeters. I would call that probably nine point one or nine point two maybe, and it is. 23 64ths, so it's just a shade under under three eighths of an inch.